Righto guys, what's going on? I've just had to film this pretty generic intro for a few videos, um, pretty much as an apology. <laughs> so it would appear that my trusty GoPro vlogging setup has finally kicked the bucket at some point. Uh, I don't know whether it's the actual port on the GoPro or the mic adapter from GoPro, but one of them has shit the bed. And as such, pretty much a lot of what's been filmed lately has absolutely terrible audio quality. So the problem is because I've had so much time off with my son, uh, I just left the GoPro here for Rex to film and pretty much since Rex started filming, all of the video has been that way. And I didn't notice until last night when I finally got the footage off and how to look at it, that the audio was absolutely atrocious for all of them. Unfortunately, that means literally the entire video for this Maloo is all just straight off the GoPro audio and it's terrible. Everything Rex filmed with the blue tunnel pulling the motor out of that is also horrific and the start of this 31 video is also going to be terrible quality so my apologies to you guys uh, i'm definitely retiring that gopro at this point to only drift footage and time lapse footage i'm going to go back to using my canon camera to vlog until i can afford to buy a new gopro so apologies for the terrible audio quality in some of these videos guys if you're watching this at the start of the video it's either for the entirety of the video or at least part of the video and i apologize but bear with us, won't be filming with the GoPro anymore and will be better quality, better quality audio from here on out. Sorry guys. Believe it, no one's more pissed off than we are. Like, it, wasted all that time filming stuff. It really is terrible. Like, that's three videos where the audio is just pretty much not there. And it's really, because we, we're really, really, really impressed with how this thing sounds and you literally cannot hear it properly through the video it just sounds atrocious on the video because of the way the audio was captured because yeah we were stoked with how this suit actually sounded and we've got i'm going to chuck a few videos off my phone into the video just to try and get that audio so you can see how it sounds but yeah apologies for the audio being terrible guys but it won't be for long thanks guys what's going on guys welcome to yet another customer video of a customer car that we are doing and you are all probably going to be pretty stoked about this it's another R31. So this is the red R31 that if you watched the video where we uh, actually tuned Adam's car, uh, you would have seen as we were fixing it, this car actually came in for a tune. Uh, but at the time, Lachlan had some pretty bad boost control issues. Uh, so we didn't bother pretty much fault finding the car any further from that point because he drove it out here. Uh, he then went on to find that it actually was, we were correct in that there was an issue with the turbine side of the turbo and the actual uh, exducer wheel was, uh, sorry, the actual turbine wheel was down like in the cut of the exhaust system so it literally had no turbine wheel on it so that was definitely our problems and that's why this thing wasn't making any boost uh so lachlan since uh sourced another i think it's a stock rb25 turbo he said and fitted fitted the dump and everything back on um and it's pretty much out here ready to go again but he's decided instead of just getting us to tune it the way it was um that he wants to do some more work and actually tune it to make it worthwhile so that's actually going to make a little bit of power so Lachlan is actually the man who sent me my um, engine loom when I rebuilt my car. He did me a solid and he had a, he had a good, pretty much un, unmolested RB30 engine loom for an R31, which is how I got out of doing uh, my rebuilds and I still use that engine loom to splice in my Microtech. So Lachlan's been a bit of help in the past. He is a classic one of those guys that owns multiple 31s. This 31 in particular is just sort of his, a bit like a, a bit of a daily drive fun car sort of thing. He's also got another one that he's doing like a project which is like a decent build on which is that in intake that i ported in and just matched for him he's going to be using that on that build so he's hoping for that build to sort of be 500 horsepower and he's also got another really really clean one that he's just got stored away as well so he's got a couple of 31s lucky so he's dropped this out and the plan is instead of just tuning it he's got his new turbo on here we're gonna to have to modify his dump pipe to fit so we've got his down pipe there to fit um, so we've got to do some modifications for that thing to get it in there and working. He's also, if you notice, this thing's just got this stock uh, VL crossover pipe. Um, so instead of running that, we are going to fit a front mount to this car, which is awesome because there's actually, there's no condensers or anything in the way. Should be quite a simple fit up job to do the front mount. Um, well, simple, simple as you can get anyway. <laughs> it's not always that simple. There's still a lot of cutting and modification to be done, but it should work is what I'm trying to say anyway. Um, and he's also got a set of GTR 440cc injectors to go in it as well. So once we do all that, 
This thing should be right to tune for 10 PSI, no worries, on the NIS tune. Uh, so he's got, yeah, his, his injectors and a new rail there, and he's dropped himself a heap of stuff to do a bit of work. So yeah, once this is done, it should be right to tune for sort of 10 PSI, which means we should see, you know, a good 250 horsepower of the wheels, which should be plenty enough fun in one of these things, as we all know from, you know, my car and Liam's car, and that uh, 250 horsepower in one of these things is, is quite a lot of fun, so. Anyway, we'll get into this, start doing some work. Righto guys, so I've got most of the front of this thing pulled off. Um, I've never really done much work on the Series 1 front end, uh, so pretty important for me to actually get this apart and have a look at how we've got to go about doing this. But I definitely reckon that the, the best way to do these front mounts, especially on 31s, we've done a few of them now, is to do it the same way mine and Rex's ended up being on our 31s, which is run your pipes through underneath the headlights. So you can poke them through there, you have to trim the Rio up. So you have to trim the rear, that off the Rio because you can't have that on the Rio, it gets in the way. And you cut a hole underneath the headlight there and put the piping out in a right angle onto a flipped front mount. So it means all your piping's at the top. It makes everything real short, all the runs are real short. Um, personally, I reckon it's the best way to do it. Uh, but what I've found is with the Series 1, because they're a different sort of front end setup to the Series 2 and 3, and they have, well actually, I'm not sure whether the Series 2 is like this or similar to the Series 3. So. Don't quote me on that one, but obviously they have uh, this this metal bottom half of the bumper, and the the bumper is actually just like a skinny a skinny part. A lot of thirty one has already know about this. Most people that have series three cars still put a series three uh, series one cars. Sorry, my bad. Most people that have series one cars still put series three bumpers on them, just because uh, they sort of sit further out. They're a bit flatter. Um, they're mostly usually a pretty more desired look. So the intercooler that Lachlan has provided is a 600 by 300, so same price, same, you know, pretty generic, bigger size you sort of get. Uh, and for it to sit the same way ours used to, we're gonna have to cut this out so that it can sit down pretty much the same level as the, that radiator support brace. Uh, otherwise, to sit it on top of that, it sits way too high. Um, so, you know, and if you flipped it over, sitting on top of that, you got these bits of the Rio I'd been in the way, so. There's not really any other way around it, we're going to have to cut this off. Uh, but obviously before I go cutting off this front bar, I'm going to talk a lot more about first. I'm not going to go just really nearly cut this car off. So I'll run that past Lachlan, but that's the way I reckon it's going to be the best way to do it. The other issue that is presented with doing that is that we're going to have to either remove his battery, relocate it, or do what I did with my one and buy like a half size battery and remount it. So that's two options there. I found with mine, like all I did was buy a half size battery. I mounted it sort of off to the side like so um, in here so that there was room down there to actually fit the intercooler pipe up beside the battery like so. And um, you know, Bosch and stuff make really good little half size batteries these days. They run the car fine. There's no problems. So I put that through to Lachlan. You can either do either or. I think either one's going to end up about the same sort of expense. Honestly, I think probably going to a smaller battery is going to be cheaper by the time we account for labour and parts in relocating the battery. Because we've got to buy a battery box, we've got to buy the uh, the, the positive uh, lead, and then we've got to do the labour of actually relocating the battery to somewhere else. So put that through to Lachlan. But I reckon the cheapest way to do it and the best way to get out of it is just to cut that centre bit out of the bar buy a half size battery amount at the same way mine was and then run the intercooler piping very, very similar to how mine was run except obviously uh, a bit of a u-pipe off that instead of mine with the front facing front facing <sighs> not much sleep going on <laughs> so anyway apart from that i've actually realized that lachlan's actually taken the whole exhaust off i was under the impression he just wanted us to modify the dump pipe to fit uh the down pipe to fit to his old exhaust but it's looking like maybe uh, perhaps he actually wants us to completely build an exhaust, a whole new exhaust, which does make sense because when it got here uh, the other day for a tune, it just had the turbo and then the downpipe mated to like a bog stock exhaust system, which for these things is very small. So that was always going to be a limiting factor. So I'd say he probably wants us to actually build him a decent sized exhaust system. So uh, I'll put that through to him as well. Make Just clear that up because um, if he does want that, I'll have to buy some pipe just to go over the diff. I don't have any bends tight enough radius to do that at the moment. So a bit of a stalemate with this one now until I get some answers from Lachlan, which is fine. Not a problem at all. So I'll pick up this video when I get some answers and I'll figure out what we're doing. Alrighty, don't mind me. I goofed. The exhaust was in the boot. <laughs> so he doesn't want a whole exhaust built. He think he just wants the down pipe modified to fit better with this. Apparently he said something because he came out while Rex was here and I was away. Obviously at the hospital and stuff. And he said that the, the way the downpipe sits, it like kicks up too much at the end and the exhaust hits the floor. 
So I think what I'll do is just put a couple of uh, slits in the downpipe on the corner that goes underneath the car and just do the old slit and weld it, which obviously um, for anyone who's done fabricating welding knows that that sort of will pull it back down. So this bend here that goes sort of underneath the floor, I just do a few cuts on this side of that and just TIG it up. It should just pull that uh, corner out a little bit, which should just get that just off the floor pan a little bit so it doesn't bang on the floor while he drives. So that's easy enough to do. And I'll just ask him about cutting that out and, really, and what he wants to do about his battery. And then we'll be on our way. Righto guys, so I've asked Lockie the question. He's happy just to cut the bottom of this bumper, which is gonna make things nice and easy. And he's happy to just buy a half size battery, which makes things nice and easy. So it's uh, game back on for getting this intercooler set up done. And hopefully we'll have this thing just about ready to go uh, by the end of the week. Hopefully tune Friday, maybe. Righto, so we've got somewhat of a picture of what's gonna happen. That's just the top bit of angle, exactly the same way we made Rex's. Um, and that worked really well last time, so. Might as well do it again. I've just text screwed it for now. Text screw is just a really easy way to make sure you have the same bolt holes that line up and just to dummy everything up. Obviously, now that I've got these holes, I'll, I'll pull them out and I'll actually drill it through so that we can bolt an eight mil bolt through. Um, and then we still need to make a mount off that for the bonnet latch, just to support the bonnet latch. Obviously stock, they have a nice big bar that goes down the middle, which you have to delete to fit this big girl. So anyway, that's, that's essentially how it's gonna be. So I've got that mounted there just so I can do the bottom mounts. Uh, once the bottom mounts are done, I'll fix the top. And then I've still got to cut out behind the lights, but I just wanted to get it all dummied up just to make sure that the Series 1 Rio and everything else sort of fits and, and we weren't going to run into, more, into any more issues with uh, clearancing. So as you can see, I just cut this bottom thing, sort of cut the center out where I had to, um, and I'll chuck some pinch weld on that uh, before it goes back so that it looks pretty good, nice and decent. Uh, but yeah, that's a pretty much a picture of how it looks. Exactly the same way mine was, exactly the same way the Rexus was. And yeah, just gotta cut holes under the lights for the piping. Uh, they've got the carbon canister just on this side, which has to be relocated, which is not a big problem at all because that's all just soft line stuff, vacuum line, it's really easy to relocate that. Um, and then yeah, as I said, half size battery to go in and probably just have to make a new battery um, mount, uh, a new one of these to suit a half size one and drill some new holes for that. But again, not that big a deal. So anyway, um, that's gonna be it for me today. Anyway though, I wanna get home at a decent hour today because I was home late last night. Uh, but this is ready for me to keep going in the morning and uh, keep cruising along with this. Try and get the inner cooler and um, the exhaust done tomorrow. Righto guys, back here in the morning now to keep working on this thing. Apologies for the video up to this point being terrible audio quality, but from here on out, it's not going to be, so thank God for that. Anyway, um, so where we left off yesterday, you just watched, so I don't need to explain it. So now we've just got to finish mounting this up, start cutting some more holes, and I've got to sort out this exhaust today. So I want to try and have this thing, like most of this mechanical, stuff pretty much sorted today so that hopefully i'm having tomorrow off because i got to do, go do some stuff on the coast and then hopefully on friday we can get this big bad girl on the rollers and um get it tuned and then lachlan can come pick it up next week is the plan so a little bit to do but should be doable in a day a little bit of a late start i've been having a few late starts my son seems to like wake up like right before i would normally want to wake up and then by the time i feed him and get back to sleep I just want to go back to bed for like a few hours, so I ended up out here like two hours later than I normally would. <laughs> but anyway, that's a good thing about working for yourself. You can choose your own hours and do that. It's not a big deal. Oh, also, we've got here a new engine for the uh, Trans Am. So this is our L77. Rex went and picked it up yesterday afternoon. Gen 4 LS goodness, 6 litre goodness. So yeah, that's, that's the, the donk that's earmarked to go into the Trans Am. All right, so we've got the LS1 off the little cradle thing um, and put it on the engine stand so we can sort of start working on this for our 31. So just about every, all the parts we need for it are here. Um, I'm just thinking about getting the heads actually sent away to get some porting and some valve work done. So that might hold us up a bit on the motor, but that's not a big deal. Even then, we can still, we've got a, a dummy engine now, that motor we bought that we pulled apart that we got from Dan with the head to... Um, just drop the valve. That's a dummy block for us now, so we can still make that block up to a gearbox and start doing a lot of the fab work in the car without having to have that engine ready, so. Anyway, we've got that off the cradle so that we can get the L77 out. Yeah. So we can get the L77 out now and um, put it on the cradle. That's the plan. Uh, so LS1's on the stand ready to get built and the L77 can go on the cradle because it's going to be probably a little while until we get to doing anything with this. All right, L77. So we've just taken the cover off and realized that this, which sucks, because now 
we won't, we hadn't planned on actually pulling this down yet. But the plan was to put it straight into the Trans Am and boost it and spend a bit of time at a low sort of 800 horsepower just setting up the car before we pull it out and actually strip it and build it properly with good rods and forged pistons and everything. But obviously at this point, looking at that, um, we're probably definitely gonna have to strip this now anyway. Although looking at, I don't know, we might, we might get away with just stripping it and putting it back together. We might not have to buy any parts for it. But all of that sand and crap in there, there's no, we can't trust that none of that's gotten actually into anything. So like it's all down in the push rods. It's probably down in the fucking lifter bores. It's all I mean, you, you, you've got yeah, to take it. We're gonna have to take it off and, and strip it and clean it, which sucks, it's a pain in the ass. But anyway, that is what it is. So yeah, the plan is to whack this in the Trans Am. I'll, I'll go through the actual plans with you in another video about the Trans Am, but yeah. L77, <laughs> step one. So we've got a pretty good deal on this thing. Um, it's an L77, but it's already had the DOD delete. It's got a cam in it. We don't know the specs at the moment though. Obviously at this point, we're gonna be pulling it down by the looks anyway. So we're definitely gonna find out. Uh, but it's got aftermarket valve springs in it. Looks like it's got new valve stem seals in it. So hopefully it's all pretty fresh in there. It's just a matter of pulling it down, make sure there's no sand in it. And um, hopefully just whacking it back together. You know, hopefully the head gaskets and everything we're right to reuse for a bit. Um, for what we want to do for starters anyway should be right. We don't want to make ridiculous power, just sort of seven, eight hundred. To start with, get the car set up and then we've got a good set of Lenardi rods. We'll chuck a set of forged pistons in it. Um, you know, all the good gear and go pump a heap of boost into it once the car's set up and go chasing sort of bottom eights. Drag challenge car. All righty then. So. Cool, 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 cool beans. Everyone's happy. It's a nice big rectangle port, six liter. Anyway, that's enough LS stuff for this video. It's not even an LS video, so. <laughs> All you IB guys are watching probably like, mm, 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 mm. <laughs> Anyway, uh, making some bottom brackets for this intercooler out of just some 20 mil um, flat bar. So I, I try not to make my intercooler mounts too solid. I actually like them to be uh, fairly flexible because you want your intercooler to be able to sort of move around a little bit and especially because it's right at the front if you happen to cop something you want that to take a little bit of the force if it's solid and something hits your fuck in something hits your intercooler it's just going to destroy your intercooler so um in the interest of having a sort of a sacrificial bit of a mount that will sort of have some give in the event of you hitting something um is pretty much what i aim to do when i'm mounting these things so i try not to yeah mount them rock solid so we found that 20 mil bar is good it's easy enough to bend up to fit where you want to mount it to and then once it's in there it's sort of it, it will crush if you if you smack something at the front of the car so i'm just going to mount the bottom of the intercooler here off these threaded bolt holes that are in in the bottom of the radiator support brace for the bottom bit of the bumper um, and that's just how they're going to be mounted it's going to pull the intercooler off a bit there and that's plenty of room as you can see i've actually fitted the um the t-bolt clamps and the silicon joints to the top obviously they're facing out because i still am yet to drill the holes in the under the headlights to face them forward but that is just to give us a guide of how far off the radiator support panel we need to be in order to sort of have the room to actually do that because rex made that mistake when he did his where he mounted the intercooler without that stuff on and then he realized he hadn't left himself enough room behind to actually get the uh, the clamp and the silicon join in there. So um, just important to pay attention to this sort of stuff when you're mounting up. Obviously for people like us, we've made the mistakes before, so we've learned the hard way. <laughs> but anyway, I'll, um, I'll cut these bits of bar, drill some holes, and then we'll pull this back off. I'll paint these mounts and start drilling, uh, cutting some more holes in the, in the front of this thing. Right, oh guys, so I've made me bottom mounts here. Uh, I've actually even stamped them, stamped them driver and passenger side because the bend in them is actually to suit the side that they're going to be mounted on. So um, driver's side here. So that just gets mounted up like that and obviously the intercooler gets pulled out so that it actually mounts properly up there. So anyway, pretty happy with those. Uh, I'm pretty happy just to paint them up. So I'll drop it back down. I'll get the top mount off as well so that I can drill the eight mil holes where the tech screws are. And then I can paint that too. Um, Last thing I need to do is figure out uh, just a bit of a support for the um, bonnet latch. So, need some bonnet latch support as well. Something else I need to look at. But apart from that, it's pretty much ready to get painted up and can get fitted back to the car. All right, so pretty much finished up all these mounts, drilled all my holes and everything. Now I'm just uh, gonna give them a flick of paint. So, 
This is what I've ended up with. These are the two bottom mounts. That's obviously the, the main mount across the radiator support panel. And that little uh, L piece there is the actual support for the bonnet latch. So should all work out pretty well. Give them a flick of paint. Um, while, I'm paint while I'm waiting for the paint to dry, I'll sort out all the bolts I need. And um, then it can pretty much start going back together. And uh, obviously before it goes in there, I've got to pull the lights out and cut the holes for the, uh, for the piping. Alrighty, so between coats, I've just been um, getting these bolts ready, cutting them up. Uh, I think I've gone through how to cut, sort of stain the stuff a few times. I always put the nut on, cut it, grind it off at an angle, and then wind the nut back out. It usually cleans the thread on the way out, and usually Bob's your auntie. You've got a nice thread to go into the intercooler, because you have to be careful because the intercooler is alloy, and you're putting a cut stainless bolt in it. If you do not clean up the end of the thread and it gets caught or does something bad to the um, alloy uh, threads on the intercooler, it's pretty much game over. It's not very good, so... Just gotta be careful of that. Anyway, I've gotta flip these over and do a coat on the back now, and then these are pretty much ready. So this time between coats, I'll pull the lights out so that I can start looking at where I'm gonna cut to get the piping through. So Lachlan's supplied all three inch stuff, like a whole heap of three inch, which is a bit of overkill. Don't particularly need to be three inch. So I'm gonna have a look in my stuff and see what I've got as far as two and a half inch stuff goes, because I think we can probably do it with two and a half inch and save a heap of room in the bay and make it like quite a bit nicer. So this is the stuff that Lockie supplied. Um, he's got heaps of three inch stuff. Um, so, you know, using three inch stuff to come all around and down here, it's sort of just way overkill. It's way bigger than you need. Um, two and a half is fine. Same with trying to get from the turbo to this one here through under that. It's just gonna be a lot easier with two and a half. Um, but anyway, I'll have a look at what I got in there. We'll make it work either way. It will happen. Righto guys, so I've got the last coat on the mounts out there. I've marked out the holes for where this intercooler piping is sort of going to be going. So, easy as that. So I've marked out them holes. So as you can see, it cuts out the mount that the ca uh, carbon canister did sit on there. Sorry, pointing the camera the wrong direction. That's a good start. Um, so you cut off that mount, so obviously this has to be relocated. But like I said, everything's sort of soft lines to it, so it's actually quite easy to relocate. So I'll worry about that in a minute. Um, so then that intercooler pipe just shoots straight from there, straight up to the elbow off the turbo, off the intake side of the turbo. And this one just goes through, as you can see, comes in here where the battery would normally sit. And in this instance, that's going to have to go up and then do a, a crossover back around to the throttle body uh, because it doesn't have a forward-facing intake so um obviously where it comes in here and it does a bit of a, a turn up here is where it encroaches on where the battery lives that's why you need a half size battery and just put it over to one side which i'll be able to show you a lot more of when i actually have the battery to put in it but anyway i'll have to get on to ordering that but regardless uh that's pretty much the gist of it so now i'm just going to take my mighty air hacksaw and um cut out these holes once these holes are cut and i'm sure it's going to fit i'll um, just spray the actual uh radiator support panel just to seal it up and uh, then we can mount everything up and uh, finish our intake piping. So I'll just show you here. What I try and do here is um, this vertical piece is a lot of the, um, I suppose, the structure for the top radiator support panel piece. So when I try and, when I do my hole, I try and leave a lot of that vertical piece in. That's why I cut down that sort of bit of a seam there. Um, do that on both sides. It just keeping that edge on that vertical piece just gives it a lot more structure. Uh, as you can see, this front piece is actually not in the best shape either. It's been bent. It's been in a few accidents. So it's not the biggest deal, but that's just something to look for when you're doing this. But we have done this a few times, and me and Rex are in agreement that this is the neatest, uh, easiest, and best way to do a front mount on a on an R31. So mine, mine came up mean. It looks sick. Yeah, same. Mine was the same. And when you actually once it's finished and you look at it, especially with a forward facing. Um, like it's a very short intake pipe route like with a forward facing you've got pretty much from here straight down to this corner into a, a turn that goes through the cooler and then from here it's just straight to the turbo it's very very simple instead of having to go you know um you know up and then down through the guard and then back down and around the front and then across and then around and then back up and then in it's just a lot neater to have the holes here and do it this way so Anyway, I'll uh, get cutting these holes. It's gonna take me a while with the air hacksaw, but uh, makes it really easy to do. <laughs> a lot easier to do these with an air hacksaw than any other tools.
Rightio guys, so that's pretty much the holes all done. So I uh, just cut the holes, painted them up just to seal them and some pinch weld just to protect from the sharp edges on the silicon jo uh, joints that go to the intercooler. And we are good to go. So we're ready to pretty much mount up our intercooler. I've sort of, Rex has started moving the um, carbon canister. We're gonna relocate it up to that corner, uh, which makes it easy. All we have to do is rerun the line from the hard line down here and uh, extend it up to the carbon canister up in that corner. So that makes that a pretty easy job. Um, so now it's just a matter of piecing together the actual intercooler out of the piping that we have. So out of the stuff that Lachlan's provided and the stuff that I've got laying around, which I can make work. Um, one thing with the, the doing this in, a, um, in an R31 is you actually do have very limited room from the engine to the, to the bonnet when it's shut. So you do have to be very careful about where you route and what size piping you use. That's why I would um, much particular rather try and do that part in two and a half um, as I was saying, three inches is a bit of overkill for what this is anyway. It doesn't need three inch. That's a lot of flow. <laughs> a lot more flow than this thing's going to be doing. Uh, two and a half inch would be heat. So, we'll, um, yeah, we'll see how we go. We'll uh, see what we can do. And just got to keep checking, make sure the bonnet's going to come down and not hit the piping and be in the way. Righto guys, one intercooler mounted up. So that's how we ended up. Looks pretty good, I reckon. Um, these, this damage to the intercooler was done uh, when it was delivered to Lachlan. He actually got a bit of a discount on it because of that. So a bit of a shame that it's damaged like that, but it's not gonna bother it. Uh, but as you can see, a bit of angle, nice and painted black. A little um, support for our bonnet latch, and that's just mounted each side. And then we've got our bottom mounts, uh, which you might not be able to see because of the autofocus on this camera is a pain in the ass, but at least there's good audio with it. So anyway, that's how it's all mounted up. Our pinch weld in our holes where our corners go through. I'm not too crazy on the orange, but it was it's what was provided. So it is what it is. I'll have to tilt that one up a bit for this side, but Rex actually went and found the old crossover pipe that came off his car. So although it's not the best looking thing, it's um, the only thing we've got that's two and a half inch that's gonna work. And like I said, it needs to sort of be two and a half inches for that bonnet to close. Otherwise it's going to be a problem. Um, I think even when that was on Rex's, Rex was going to hit that. Or something like that. Either way, it's, it's, it, you're stuck for room over this cover is pretty much where the problem is. So at least that piece is going to get us to this area here near the cover where we can sort of start pointing down and look at going to a bigger bigger sort of size. But we're going to have to use that over the top. I'm, unfortunately, there's no way around it. So we'll just try to clean it up and preview it up a bit and um, maybe try and take off the... Bov and try and block it off or see if Lachlan wants to buy a Bov off us. <laughs> Don't know. Oh, we'll see what happens anyway. That's what we're up to now is to start actually taking this crossover pipe off and start actually trying to piece together this system. Big old hectic VL spec. Not bad. Not bad at all. Right, oh, so we've managed to bits together this intake out of just, it's a complete Frankenstein of an intake setup but it's what we had to do to get it to clear the bonnet and um, with what we had it's it's all we could sort of get done so we've got a two and three quarter to two and a half inch into this uh, crossover pipe which we got off Rex's so this is good this all clears the bonnet has the bob in it got this two and a half inch 45 degree silicon bend which is the only one I had so mind you none of this is pretty it's just um, obviously what we can do to get it done I'll put it to Lachlan that um, if he wants me, I can go and buy new stuff so that it sort of looks the part. If not, uh, if he wants to save some money, he can pretty much have all this stuff because it's just stuff out of our kit that we have lying around. And in future, he can just swap it out as he, as he wants to. So two and a half inch 45, two and a half inch 45, two and a half to three inch, three inch 90, three inch 90 in a cooler, three inch 90, three inch straight, which we'll have to trim up into a three to two and a half inch, into a two and a half inch straight into a two and a half to two inch elbow to the turbo. So as you can see, heaps of joins and stuff like that, but it all works and it all clears. So that's where that's up to now. Right, oh guys, so we've got the 31 back outside for now, uh, just cause I'm not working tomorrow. So Rex is going to work on the Malu tomorrow. We have to flush the water out of it, put some coolant back in it. Uh, Rex has actually got onto a um, power steering pump. 
Uh, so he's going to exchange that, and so that'll get exchanged as well. And then, pretty sure the, t the owner is going to come pick it up because he's that excited about it <laughs> that he doesn't want to leave it here until after we've done the um, the oil cooler. He wants to pick it up. He wants to drive it. He's he's so stoked with it at the moment. So. Uh, it, so angry that the audio for the video of the Malou didn't work, so you didn't really hear it properly. I'll, I chucked a few phone clips in it just so that you just could hear it a bit better. Um, but the thing sounds awesome. But anyway, he's that excited. He doesn't want to leave it here until the um, oil cool is done, so he's going to come pick it up tomorrow. So Rex is going to do the, the um, power steering pump and the coolant and stuff in the morning. And then he's just going to bring it back once the cooler has arrived. Because at this point, we don't even know where it's gonna, when it's going to be here. because So it could be weeks. Who knows? So Yeah, Rona has... Um biggest problem we're having at the moment is trying to get parts because freight and supply are just a mess. Yeah, so everyone's I can't, no one can give us any definitive answers. So, yeah, so our supplier can't give us a uh, time on the cooler kit because their supplier for the cooler cores can't give them yeah, any time. time frame. So there's, it's just not happening. So. so anyway, so Tommy's decided to come pick it up instead of waiting. God Lord knows how long for a cooler kit because he's, yeah, he's too excited to drive it. So. Anyway, that's where I'm going to leave the 31 for now, and I'll pick up this video when I come back out, and we'll do some more work on it. What's going on guys? Back working on the big mighty 31 today. Uh, so today we've got to finish off this intercooler piping. We've also got to make a throttle bracket and turn the throttle cable sort of doovy around so that it can come over the top instead of underneath, because as we know, you can't come <laughs> where the intercooler piping is. So we've got to turn that around and make a throttle bracket off this side of the manifold to actually um, allow us to have a throttle. Another thing we've got to change is this setup on a boosted car, this is not good. You shouldn't have uh, pretty much your breather systems for your engine seeing pressure on this side. This should be pretty much routed into the intake side so it actually draws air in. But where it is there, it's going to see boost, which is going to pressurize the crankcase, which is not good. Um, that's bad. So, need to sort that out. Um, I did talk to Lachlan, he's keen to just sort of pretty much buy this office. Um, like real cheap, pretty much nothing. Uh, but then as time goes on, if he likes, he can sort of swap out these joints and stuff for newer, nicer items. Uh, the other thing is we don't have any T-bolt clamps to suit two and a half, so these are just gonna have to be old school sort of worm clamp, you know, old school stuff. We all know it works, it just, it doesn't look that great. But personally, I'm not that worried about it because I know it's gonna work. And I don't think Lachlan's that worried about it because he can replace it as he wants anyway. Um, you know, as you can see, this car is, Pretty much just a bit of a fun car for Lachlan. Like I said to you earlier in the video, he's got other ones that he's got for projects, which are a lot nicer. So anyway, um, we'll finish that off today. I've got the drop saw out. Um, sort out that throttle cable. Uh, sort out that breather. Finish relocating the um, carbon canister, which I bought some line for to, uh, yesterday. Also bought a half size battery. So this is a 430cc, which should be heaps of cranking amps for, um, for the RB. So hopefully that fits in there on that battery tray and there's still plenty of room for our intercooler piping and then it sort out the exhaust so then it's just about ready to go so i have done some sums and looked into how we're going to have to wire in this resistor pack to run the gtr injectors and pretty much my guesstimation of how long it's going to take us to wire it in you know so the labor costs of that um, plus putting the injectors i believe that Lachlan would be better off spending the money just buying better high impedance injectors. So these low impedance injectors, they're not the best. Obviously these GTR injectors, the good thing about them is they're really, really readily available. There's a fair few of them out there and they're usually pretty cheap to buy, but they are quite old injectors. They do have a tendency to leak. The centers of them flog out and they leak through the injector and there's not really much you can do to fix them for starters. Um, you know, secondly, they are just old, a lot of them are dirty. They need to be serviced, flow tested, cleaned, matched. Um, which obviously I don't think I wouldn't go spending that sort of money on a 20 year old injector anyway. Um, and then, yeah, so for Lachlan to then pay us labor to wire in the resistor pack to run those injectors, he could just about buy a new set, like a brand new set of flow matched good high impedance injectors. So that's what we're probably going to look at. I'll, I'll put that to Lachlan, see what he reckons. That being said, the, um, the stock VLT injectors in this car should in theory, be right to tune up to 9 PSI. We shouldn't run out of injectors until about 9 pounds. So I'll put it to Lachlan that I reckon he'd be better off spending the money on some better injectors rather than paying us to wire in that uh, resistor pack and getting those injectors working. And I'll just let him know that if he wants, I'm happy to tune it on sort of 8, 9 pound for now if he wants to wait and do that. Or who knows, he might just want us to, to do it anyway. He might just want to put the GTR injectors in anyway. But I'll just put it to him before I go doing that. So. And today he's got the intercooler piping done, get that throttle back in, get the exhaust on it, pretty much get it running as it sits for now. And then 
uh, wait for Lachlan's advice on what to do before we go on to tune next week. Look at that, fits like a glove. Half size battery, plenty of room for cooler piping. So need to make a new uh, hold down mount for this battery as well to actually bolt it down and secure it properly. Obviously that's a mad roadworthy issue, so that has to be done. The other thing is, as I go through and trim up this intercooler piping, I need to obviously clean it out really carefully because it's all secondhand stuff. So a little bit oily and um, a bit dusty from sitting in the, the box and stuff. So just gotta be careful to make sure it's really nicely cleaned out as it goes into, so. Um, that's pretty much what I'm going to do. Hopefully Rex is keen to get on to doing the throttle bracket while I get onto that. And, um, I'm yeah. not keen, but I'll do it. Do your job, mate. I'm not keen, but I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> so the other day, I like smashed my thumb with the um, air hacksaw, if this camera will focus. I like smashed the back corner of my thumbnail out, which I'm really not looking forward to how that's going to... I hope it just sort of heals so it doesn't try and grow back. Because if it tries to grow back, it's probably going to ingrow the thumbnail, and then that's going to suck. But um, when you're doing this to the RB30, the actual the throttle, the bracket for the throttle cable on the um, on the throttle body, you can actually just sort of turn the little what thing that actually holds the wire around, as you can see Rex doing here. So you take the nut off, and you can actually just turn that this little duver, pull it off, and turn it like 180 degrees without moving where the spring is, yeah, which you allows got, you to. You got to be pretty gotta careful. Watch, just got to watch this spring. Yeah, that will pop the spring off. Yeah. Might need to give Rex a hand, but yeah, you can actually just turn what that thing that holds actual um, cable. You can turn it 180 degrees so that it pretty much you can run the cable from over the top and then down, which is how we had it set up on Rex's before we went to a forward facing. So we'll just do that. I'll give Rex a hand and I'll show you. Right, so you can see here what I was talking about. So it's been turned around, so now it comes over from the top. And we just screwed, and it, screwed a little boop, screw boop, boop. into that. Um, spare hole there just to as a spring, spring keeper. keeper just to let that uh, spring still reach around to where it's got to go so <laughs> reach around <laughs> <laughs> so now Rex is on to making a bracket to actually hold the throttle cable I've cut the intercooler pieces that I had to cut and I've given them all the good degrees out and I'll give them all the gurney out now uh, make sure they're all nice and clean no oil residue or specifically metallic dust or anything in them Give them a nice clean out and then I can start actually putting that together with proper clamps and clamp it up. It's final sort of put together setup. Um, but while I've got stuff out of the way of this battery tray, I need to make a new hold down for this battery and probably turn it around so that the positive's over here. So do a switch around. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Build another, which should be easy enough because I've got his old one, which has got the two. Hopefully the new battery's not too high, but it's got our two sort of hold down bolts. So all I need to do is make a plate that goes over that battery and fits pretty well and drill two holes where they're sort of needed in the in the battery. Oh, not smack the camera on the bonnet. But yeah, that should be a pretty simple thing to do, but it's just a lot easier to do it before the intercooler piping in the way. All right, so we've started piecing this back together. We've got the front end back together. As you can see, full VL spec. So piping's all together and in there and sort of actually tightened down. So pretty much everything in the engine bay sort of side of things is ready to go. All that we need to do still is actually some, just some vac line for the boost T. And also lockie has got a, a um, boost gauge in the car, which I'm not sure if he wants me to wire in as well. So I'll talk to him about that as well as our injector situation and just double check that with him. So from here, it's just the exhaust. So we'll lift the car up and do the exhaust now. And uh, I actually had to make, as you can see, got our new battery hold down bracket. Uh, Rex made a new throttle bracket for the throttle cable. Which now goes over the top like so. so. It's all just that easy. We've also got to run some backline to the bulb. There's a few things we've got to run some backline back line to now, but that's pretty much the front mount set up. Pretty well sorted. I had to extend the battery cable because the one that was on it was too short to get the earth over to where it is here. So made some, made another earth cable for the battery out of some 35 mil squared wire, which can go on soon, but apart from that. So as I was saying, it's not ideal having like worm clamps because we don't actually have the T-bolt clamps in stock and stuff like that. So, but I did say to Lockie, if he wants, I'll, I'll go buy it all and make it out of that if he wants to, if he wants to pay for that. But he's happy just to run it like this as long as it's going to work. We are only planning on running sort of probably 10 pound or less at the moment, uh, especially if he doesn't want to change the injectors out. We're going to be limited by our injector size, but we'll just um, see how we go. 
and we'll see what Lockie reckons and we'll go from there. But for now, we'll jack it up, do the exhaust, and then that's that done. So, right, oh, one more thing done. Exhaust is all sorted out. Uh, so, full three inch exhaust now. So, we actually had the cut. There was a bit of a um, restriction in here, the way it goes to that flange. So, also, it was angled a bit too high, it was hitting the floor of the car. So we cut that off and made it three inch all the way through with the new flange and angled it so it doesn't hit the car. Um, this exhaust, uh, I have no idea who built it or where it came from. It's a full three inch, but it's not a very good exhaust and it's underneath the diff, which I don't particularly like. Me and Rex build ours on dirty ones over the top. Um, so I really didn't want to spend too much time on this exhaust because I feel like it's sort of dead money. Um, if, if Lockie wants a decent exhaust, I'd rather build him a whole new one rather than try and mess around with this for too long. So then the other thing we did was cut the three inch muffler off his old system and weld it on the tailpipe of this. So now it's got a three inch sort of muffler, which Lockie wanted on there. Um, so the exhaust is in and it works, you know, it's going to be fine. It's going to do the job, same as everything else. Um, so yeah, that's the exhaust done. So pending what Lockie decides he wants to do about this injector situation, this car is pretty much ready to hit the dyno next week. So uh, that's good. That's awesome. So it's going to be it for today. Um, Drop it back down, hook the battery back up, and we can start it and move it around again. So that's the goal. That was the goal for today. So I've had a pretty good day, and I'm going to load up my trailer and head home because tomorrow I'm going to get this AE82 from Sam at Whitey's Wiring. It's ready to go with its new link. So it'll be a pretty big week of tunes next week, actually, by the looks of things. If it all works out, if it all eventuates, we've got this thing to tune. I'll have that AE82 to tune. Um, we've got a 1.5J 180SX coming out for a tune. And I'm sure there was something else as well. Oh, might be tuning Pecky's AE86 next week as well. Um, so he's gone aspirated 4 agent that thing now to street it because he's got the, the, um, the Sylvia to track. So he's got a new motor and that ready to go for a tune. So, you know, if that works out, that's four tunes next week. So that'll be pretty, pretty flat out. So we'll see what Lucky wants to do about this thing. Um, I know he's not in a super mad hurry with it. So we'll sort of just talk to him about it through the weekend and, and see what he wants to do. But like I was saying, I'd rather him spend that money on a decent new set of injectors rather than pay us to muck around and try and wire in that resistor pack to get those crappy old injectors working. Doesn't make a lot of sense logistically and economically. So we'll put that to him, see what he says. But apart from that, everything else on this car is pretty much done, ready to go. And um, yeah, it's a little bit nicer than it when it came here, which is what we're all about. So very cool. I would. I wish we had like the stock of um, of clamps and and joiners to actually build that intercooler piping a bit nicer. But same thing. It's gonna work. It's exactly. It's pretty much the the entire intercooler system we pulled off Rex's, uh, albeit with actually a bigger intercooler and stuff. So we know it's gonna work. It's just that it would have been cool to make it a little bit nicer. But as I told you, like this car, it's obviously been in a few front end prangs. It's got a different radiator support panel in it. Um, it's all a bit twisted. It's. It is what it is. Like I said, it's Lockie's sort of just weekend fun car. So just making it a bit better and get it tuned on, you know, 10 pound. It's got a 25 box in it. So there's literally no reason we can't put more boost through it, uh, except for head studs and head gasket as a matter of how long they'll last. But apart from that, there's no reason we can't pump a little bit more boost into it. But just depends on what Lockie wants. 250 horsepower is pretty, pretty staunch. It's pretty fun. So especially from the little RB25 turbo, it's going to be pretty punchy. So that'll be sick. Anyway, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Smash like, smash subscribe. Peace out. Catch you, bye. Right, guys, one last thing I forgot to show you probably very closely is our uh, relocation of the carbon canister. Uh, so this obviously used to sit down in this little area, but we've removed it or moved it up to here. So all Rex did was these soft lines, which actually used to run from here up and then along the crossover pipe. He's just extended them, taking the hard line out. And uh, so they're just extended soft lines now. And then this line, which comes from the hard line that's down here, which is actually a breather from the fuel tank. So we just got some 5 16th fuel line and extended that so it runs up to the carbon canister now. Yeah, so right. now this, this is still working as factory intended. It's just been relocated up to there. We even used the same mount, uh, which we pulled out of down there. So that just sits up there nice and out of the way. We've got to find a spring. There's actually a spring that retains that. So. That's where that used to sit, those hard lines there. So we've just removed that. Remove that. And it sits up there now. So that's pretty much, I suppose, the, the biggest thing you've got to relocate when doing this. Obviously, this front mount setup works on cars with no AC. We have not tried a front mount this way with a car with AC yet. So we can't comment that that works. I've never seen an R31 that had AC. Oh, uh, yeah, there's a couple, there's a lot of them out there. Um, what's the do bait? Yeah, what's the turbo? I don't know. Do <laughs> But anyway, so yeah, this is the new, new big setup. So 
Nice and well and good. We should probably, um... Yeah, that's probably not real cool. That's probably not very good at all. Given that that's, how long that's been running like given that. Given that that goes, is the you know. pressure side. <laughs> yeah, it's a pressure yeah. side. Oh, that's um, no we'll good. That out, hey. Yeah, probably. All right. Anyway, I'm going to hook up the battery and start this thing up. Anyway, okay, but sorry, I just wanted to show you that carbon canister. Thanks. Catch you later. See you. Bye.